All right, hello there guys and welcome to today's tutorial with your main Samuel Dexter. Yeah, in this tutorial, I'm going to touch on how to render uh, out of Cinema 4D using V-Ray uh, render engine. Yeah, so I found out many people are fumbling with how to um, render um, an animation out of the V-Ray uh, render engine. And that's basically what I'm going to touch on in this tutorial. All right, so um, before you is a simple scene up setup, and this just consists of a little, um, just a simple ball, soccer ball, with a couple of lights to light up the scene and a, and a disc for the infinite environment, which is something I've taught in my previous tutorial. Um, so yeah, it's basically a simple scene with uh, um, some dynamic systems just to enable the ball to bounce. So let me go ahead and play it for you to see. Um, so you see, there's very, very, very simple scene of setup, nothing complicated. All right, so um, without further ado, let's jump right in. So um, let's say you have a scene with your animation and you want to render it out in V-Ray, right? Okay, let's head on. Just simply go to your render settings. And I know um, by now you should know that, of course, you have to turn on your render engine, um, which is V-Ray in this case. And for the meantime, what you, I would want you to do is to go to your, uh, the save where you have the native output, which is for the fiscal and standard render, okay, which is a native. And you might be wondering, well, um, maybe perhaps you've tried this and it didn't work. Yes, I understand. Um, but this is not obligatory, but I just highly recommend that you just do it, okay. You set this up, and this is something that will pick up in case you you decide not to use the production render of V-Ray output, but you want to use the picture viewer, which is which is something you can do, but not advisable. But either way, what I usually do is I just turn this on, um, this setup on, and that is all. Um, and just a quick tip, um, I'm using PNG because I would want to be able to preview the, the renders, okay? Yeah, because if I, the, the right output is always supposed to be an open EXR, which is a more professional way to render things out, which is for, for broadcast quality. But in this case, we're just having a, a simple tutorial, so there's no need to go into open EXR, ESR. Um, the, the very next thing to do is to go to your um, V-Ray image output, all right, under the common tab, and make sure that you have these two things, these checkboxes checked, all right? and make sure that you have the same output all right and you can select your formats like i said choose exr if you're going for production render quality but in this case just a tutorial so i'm, I'm going to keep it on png and that is that is basically all you need if you want to have the alpha channel in a separate file you can go ahead and click this checkbox all right okay uh, so that's basically, uh, should I say, a step two, right, after setting this one up, which is not super necessary, but I just recommend it. This is what is actually needed. As you can see, it says, use V-Ray output system, all right? So it means this one is going to override this one, all right? Okay. So what do you do next? Um, the third step, important step, is to go to V-Ray render element. Um, in case you're wondering if you're new to C or whatever, if you're wondering how this was set up, I just you know decided to um, dock it here. It's basically this V-Ray drop down. Okay, I've just you know, docked it here. All right, so just click on V-Ray menu, go to render elements. Okay. All right, so when you have your render element, what you know, what you have to understand is that we have a lot of um, passes. All right. And it's all dependent on your scene, okay? And perhaps you might be already familiar with what passes are. And in this case, if you had set up your your render in here with the normal output, and you thought that was going to be all, you're going to get disappointed because yeah, V-Ray works in a way that you need to um, specify the passes that it should render out, okay? All right, so like I said, um, to know which passes to set out is all dependent on what you have in your scene, okay? 
All right, so if you check out this scene, um, we don't have any glass or anything, so it means that we wouldn't need refraction, but we will need reflection, okay? So I'll just click and drop down here, and make sure I click on denoise, all right, so that um, the denoising um, algorithm can give you, a, you know, some anti-aliasing and all that to make it look much nicer. All right, so I selected uh, reflection. I go go ahead and add global illumination. That is, if I want to play with it in the compositing engine, like um, After Effects. All right. All right. So uh, the next thing I think I will need will be perhaps shadow. Um, I might need um, a multi mat ID. Okay, sorry, not ID. The multi mat itself. Uh, and what you can do is to um, set, set to white. And this is basically something uh, that I, I will teach on, in a separate video concerning your know, mats, which is essentially for masking and part of your scene out. So in case if that's what you're looking for, uh, what you can do is that uh, on each and every object, or that is uh, each and every geometry you have in your scene, you can go ahead, right click, um, go to extensions, V-Ray tags, and add the object properties. So when you have the object properties tag here, remember we have something called an object ID. So you can go ahead and give it a number. In this case, I set it to one. The same I did for the ball, but in this case, I set it to two. And you can see that the tag uh, updates here. If I should set this to five, you realize that it's updated here, like five. Okay, so two. Okay, and for the text, three. All right, this is to help you in the compositing section to be able to mask things out. For example, if you have this ball um, go, uh, I mean, sorry, the text go around the ball. Um, and in a case whereby you want to, you are rendering these two objects separately, um, what will happen is that the ball, the soccer, in this case, this text will pass in front of the ball instead of passing at the back of the ball, like you have here. All right, so the, the essence of um, maths are to help you to mask out the layers which one to determine which one will be on the front and which one will be on the back all right so um let me assume um this explanations for those who are not familiar with that so that is that so in this case you would have to just set you can add more mats multi mats here then make sure you just name them accordingly so for example ball i'll name it multi mat ball okay then now um, let's go and check which number I give to the ball, which is two. Okay, so I'm going to set it to two. Then this one, I'm going to set this one to uh, the disk, which is the floor. All right, um, floor. Okay. All right. Then the next one I'm going to that will be the text, which is three. All right. So I can just hold on control and drag. It's okay just to create uh, a copy. All right. So I'm going to name this one a text. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I I select white from the drop down mask type drop down, and I'm name I'm going to name this three, all right, match up this way, okay, two, and floor is one, all right, okay, so um, that's about it, so these are my render elements, I decided to add up, okay, in this, um, in this case, I will go ahead and even add a shadow, matte shadow and all that, Right, so like I said, it's all dependent on your scene and what you have in there, and what you you want to decide to have control over in your compositing engine. All right, so let's say this is what we have, and so we are good to go. Okay, and make sure that I click on this. Make sure all these are checked. Okay, so reflection. You make sure anti aliasing is checked. Shadow, the same. You know, and all that. And I think we are good to go. 
So from here you can go and um, you can go ahead and click your uh, the production render okay to start the uh, the main render okay all right so I have already done that ahead of time so you can just skip the whole render all right so this is what we uh, this is what I had from the render okay. So let's jump right in into After Effects and try to compose it what we have, right? Okay, so uh, from the render, you can see I have a couple of classes here. I could go to the view, um, the list view, so it's more clear. So you can see you have the bounce animation. The very first one is the normal, uh, that's the beauty pass. Okay, the next one is the background. In the previous, um, ahead of time, I had added um, the background pass. So we have background crypto math and all that, um, which will not be um, essential in this um, tutorial. But I am going to go in for the beauty pass, which is the actual um, render. Okay, click it and make sure that the sequence is selected. So we have the main pass. I'll go ahead and create a composition, okay? All right, the next thing will be, uh, let's select, let's go for, let's go for, okay, so the denoiser pass, okay? Which is very, very important, okay? Because every time um, the, the render is complete, you have the, uh, you have the you know, the denoising algorithm applied to your image to make it more smooth and crisp. Okay, so you don't see any form of um, um, grains on your on your render, but you have a, a much more cleaner you know render. Okay. All right, so I'm going to head on back to After Effects. Okay, so the next thing is um, let's double click and go in for the effects. Okay, and so the effect is added. I didn't select it from the render element. I never selected from the render elements, but uh, what you have to know is that at this point in time, you have a whole lot of effects here, which you can layer up in the V-Ray VFB. Okay, so in case, for example, I decided to add, I mean, add something like a filmic tone map, all right. Um, so this is an effect, as you can see. If I add a filmic tone map, I can go ahead and choose something like um, from linear to ACES CG, uh, and so I could have you know, different um, in these different um, tone mapping upon my on on my render and you can see this looks good so at the end of the day if you want to have this effect applied that's that's what's going to be rendered out as um, that's what's going to be rendered out as your um, anime effect results okay so that's 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 just something to keep in mind okay so what i'm trying to say is that at the end of the day whatever effect you add here is what's going to be um, placed in here in this particular pass right the effects results okay all right so let's go ahead and add one more i think i would need the shadow okay the reflection is also very important okay all right so in all i have the main beauty pass i have the denoiser pass i have the effects pass i have the re reflection pass other reflection pass right so um I already have tossed in the beauty pass, which is the main, the main render. Okay. The next thing I would want to do is to toss onto my render the denoiser. What will happen when I turn this um, the denoiser off? You realize it's become. Just look at this portion. Just look at this portion of the of the render. You realize that it's very grainy okay but when i turn the denoiser on it's smoothing it all right so it means that 
in this particular pass, which is the denoiser, is doing a very great deal to keep in your your render very very smooth. Okay, all right. So just check it out. All right. So the next thing you're going to do is to uh, add the effects. Okay. And with the effects, like I've explained, you don't see much here because at that point in time, I didn't, you know, add all these um, color correction details onto it. Okay, so I didn't actually have this information stored into it. All right, so you you practically can't see any um, difference in the in, in the in the composition at this point in time. But I mean, this is the workflow. Okay. So the, the last thing you want to add is your reflection in this case. And this is how the reflection looks like. Yeah, so what do you do? You just go to your mode and go to add. All right. And in case you can't see the, the difference, let me show you what, how it looks like actually without it. Look, you see there's a very great difference. If I turn it off, there's no much reflection. If I turn it on, you see all the nice reflections going on here. Okay, look here, this time around. You realize that, or you can look at the seams here. I turn it off, and when I turn it on, look. All right, so, yeah, so you, you tend to have super control over each and every pass and how you want to make it look. You can decide to crank it up, you know, using curves and all that. So for example, I can just go ahead and throw in um, an adjustment layer and I can decide to um, add a color correction like curves. Uh, so I can decide to you know, crank it up a bit. All right, so if I should turn it off, you see the difference, right? Okay, so perhaps I will also cut it and yeah, I'm just tossing it onto the reflection alone. And so if I crank the reflections up, and in this case, if I should turn it off, you see there's a lot more detail, all right? So yeah, I mean, this is basically the workflow. And of course, in case you're wondering if it's a black background, no, it isn't, it's transparent. Okay, so yeah, I can go ahead and create a um, a solid background, it could be a gradient background or whatever, or you could also render, um, in this case, I could have rendered the background here, so that I could just place it at the back. Alright, so guys, I mean, this is, this is the end of the tutorial, okay, um, I hope you learned a thing or two, um, of course, I didn't add uh, motion blur and all that to make it look realistic, but the whole idea is to just show you how to render out of you and that's that. But of course, you can use, um, there's a quick tip, you can use um, RSMB. All right, so I found it here. Uh, so you can decide to just toss it onto uh, um, the ball, in this case, uh, the main beauty pass. So you have some, you know, a simulated uh, motion blur going on, as you can see here. You get the whole idea. All right. So, yeah. Um, so guys, this is why I would want to draw the curtains on today's tutorial. I do hope I learned a thing or two on how to render out a, uh, an animation in V-Ray, okay, yeah, so here it is, okay, all right, so till next time, I'm going to see you in the next video, take care, bye-bye.